The Sulaban were dead already. They just didn't know it yet. Commander Korvac gripped the armrests of his command chair as his battered warship shuddered from another blast. Warning lights flashed red across every console. Shield strength was down to 10%. Weapons offline. Life support failing. Enemy ships swarmed like locusts on the viewscreen, pummeling the Suliban fleet into oblivion. This was the end. After five long years, the Suliban Vkani War had reached its inevitable conclusion. The once mighty Suliban Empire was crumbling, beaten back to its core worlds, fleets smashed to ruins. And now Korvac's ship, the last line of defense, was about to fall. Korvac closed his eyes and waited for the final barrage that would consign him to the void. At least he would die fighting, like a true Suliban warrior. Around him, his bridge crew worked frantically, shouting desperate orders, trying to coax more power from burnt-out systems. False hope. It was over. Suddenly, a new alarm blared. Korvac's eyes snapped open. Commander! New contact emerging from hyperspace bearing 227.6, the sensor operator called out. More Vakani ships, Korvac growled. Negative, sir. It's... I don't recognize the configuration. Never seen anything like it. Korvac leaned forward, peering at the strange vessel that had materialized on the viewscreen. It was small, barely a quarter, the size of a Suliban cruiser. Its hull was a patchwork of smooth curves and harsh angles. Definitely not Vakani. A hail pinged across the comm system. Korvac stared at it hesitantly. An ally? Impossible. The Suliban stood alone in this war. Yet what did it matter now? He punched the accept key. The screen flickered and resolved into... A human? The alien was bipedal, with pale pinkish skin and a shock of fur on its head. It regarded Korvac with small, deep-set eyes. Greetings. I'm Captain Timothy Robertson of the Terran Confederation Starship Intrepid, the creature said. We're here to help. Korvac blinked at the alien. Was this some Vakani trick? He'd never seen a species like this human. I am Commander Korvac of the Suliban Empire, he answered stiffly. Why would you help us? What do you want? The human, Robertson, spread his hands. We're explorers. We detected your battle and thought you could use some assistance. We don't want anything in return. None of this made sense. But with Vakani ships closing fast, Korvac had no time to argue. Very well, he said. We accept your aid. The words tasted bitter. The Suliban needed no one. And yet... The human ship slid alongside Korvac's crippled vessel. As tractor beams locked on and the human crew hurried aboard, a final desperate thought flickered through Korvac's mind. The Suliban were already dead, but maybe, just maybe, these humans could give them one last chance to fight. In the bustling hangar bay of the Intrepid, Commander Korvac stood hunched over a tactical display, his four eyes scanning rapidly over enemy ship formations and attack vectors. Captain Robertson and his senior officers gathered around, watching the Suliban leader work. The Vakani fleet relies heavily on these two cruisers for command and control, Korvac said, stabbing a clawed finger at two blinking dots at the heart of the enemy formation. If we can take them out, the rest of their ships will be thrown into disarray. Robertson leaned in, his brow furrowed in concentration. Our scans show those cruisers are heavily shielded. We'd never get through their defenses in a straight fight. Agreed, Korvac nodded but there may be another way. He tapped a few keys, and the display zoomed in on a small gap in the enemy's formation. Their fleet is clustered so tightly that they can't maneuver quickly. If we could jump a strike team right into this gap. Oh, we could hit them before they have a chance to react, Robertson finished, a slow grin spreading across his face. Korvac, that's brilliant. We'll need to time it perfectly, though. Korvac turned to face the human captain fully. My best warriors are at your disposal. They'll join your boarding team to sabotage the cruisers from within, while our combined fleet keeps the Vakani engaged. Robertson clasped the Suliban's shoulder, a gesture of respect between soldiers. Let's get to work then. We don't have much time. As the strike team made hasty preparations, 
Neither of them noticed the shadowy figure slipping out of the hangar bay, a secret transmission already beaming out to the enemy fleet, warning them of the impending attack. Alarms blared as the Allied strike force dropped out of hyperspace, weapons primed and ready. But instead of the expected confusion, the Vikani ships were already moving to intercept, a web of crackling energy beams crisscrossing the void toward them. On the bridge of his crippled warship, Korvac barely had time to shout a warning before the barrage slammed home. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks and smoke as the whole ship bucked and heaved. Shields down to 15%, someone shouted. Hull breaches on decks 4 through 12. Korvac struggled to pull himself upright, dark blood seeping from a gash on his head. Through blurred vision, he saw the human fleet taking a pounding too, their formation crumbling under the onslaught. All ships, evasive maneuvers! Captain Robertson's voice crackled over the comm, tight with strain but still commanding. Get in close and engage at point-blank range. We can still do this. The bridge of the Intrepid was a scene of controlled chaos as crew members raced to patch damaged systems and keep the ship in the fight. Robertson gripped the arms of his command chair as another hit nearly knocked him from his seat. Captain, the Sulaban fleet is taking heavy losses, the tactical officer called out. They're not going to last much longer out there. Robertson pursed his lips, mind racing. They'd been outplayed, that much was clear. The Vikani had known they were coming. But how? Time enough to figure that out later. Right now, they had to salvage this mess. He punched the shipwide calm. This is the captain. I know things look bad right now. The enemy got the jump on us and we're taking a hell of a beating. But we can't give up. We're not just fighting for the Suliban today, but for every free species in the galaxy. If the Vikani win here... Their tyranny will spread like a cancer until every last one of us is under their boot heel. So I'm asking you, human and Suliban alike, to dig deep and find that strength inside you. Stand with me now and let's show these bastards what we're made of. Man your battle stations and give them hell. As a ragged cheer went up from the crew, Robertson turned to his Suliban ally. Korvac, I need your best warriors for a critical mission. We have to take out the enemy command ship. It's the only way to turn the tide. The grizzled Suliban commander nodded grimly, blood still trickling down his face. You shall have them, Captain. For the honor of the Suliban, we will fight to the last. Even as the strike team prepared to board a shuttle, warning lights flashed across the Intrepid's control panels. Captain, we're losing main power, the engineer shouted over the din of battle. Something's wrong. The reactor is dropping offline. A cold dread settled in Robertson's gut. This was no lucky shot from the enemy. They'd been betrayed from within. A spy or saboteur working to undermine the Alliance. He slammed a fist on the arm of his chair. Reroute all auxiliary power to shields and weapons and get me a security team to the engineering deck now. As the Intrepid shuddered under another barrage, her defenses barely holding, Robertson steeled himself for what was to come. One way or another... This ended today. The Intrepid limped through space, engines sputtering as it descended towards a barren, rocky world. Captain Timothy Robertson gripped the control console, guiding the battered ship to a landing in a secluded canyon. As the dust settled, he turned to Commander Korvac and the handful of surviving Suliban loyalists. Welcome to Tartarus, Timothy said. It's not much, but it's off the grid. We should be safe here while we regroup. The ragtag group emerged from the ship, scanning the desolate landscape. Korvac's four eyes narrowed as he surveyed their new base of operations. It will do. We have work to do. Over the next few days, they set up a makeshift command center in a network of caves. Korvac hunched over a communications array, sending encrypted messages to his network of contacts still loyal to the old guard. Timothy, meanwhile sat cross-legged on the ground, surrounded by cannibalized computer parts. "'What are you doing?' a young Suliban engineer asked. Timothy's fingers flew across a jury-rigged keyboard. "'Hacking into the Suliban military network. If we're going to expose this conspiracy, we need hard evidence.' Hours passed as Timothy delved deeper into the encrypted files. His eyes widened as he pieced together the extent of the Cabal's plan." 
Korvac, you need to see this. The Suliban commander hurried over, peering at the screen. His face hardened as he read the damning intel. Zarkos, that traitorous scum. He's selling us out to the Vakani. Timothy nodded grimly. We need to move fast. They're already spreading propaganda, painting us as the enemy. On Suliban worlds across the sector, view screens flickered to life with an emergency broadcast. Warlord Zarkos, resplendent in ornate battle armor, addressed the populace. My fellow Suliban, I come to you with grave news. We have uncovered a plot by human infiltrators, working with traitorous elements within our own ranks, to destabilize our great empire. These dangerous invaders seek to manipulate us for their own gain. But fear not. Your loyal servants in the military have the situation well in hand. Report any sightings of humans or known sympathizers immediately. Together, we will crush this threat and usher in a new era of Suliban dominance. Back on Tartarus, Timothy and Korvac watched the transmission with growing anger. We need to counter this, Timothy said. If we don't act soon, we'll lose any chance of swaying public opinion. Korvac nodded. Agreed. But we'll need irrefutable proof. There's a heavily fortified data hub on Suliban Prime. If we can access it, we'll have everything we need to expose Zarkos and his cabal. Then that's our target, Timothy said. He turned to address the assembled loyalists. I won't lie to you. This mission is high risk. We'll be vastly outnumbered and outgunned. But the fate of your people hangs in the balance. Who's with us? A chorus of determined voices answered him. As they began to plan their infiltration, none of them realized the true scope of the challenges that lay ahead. The Suliban homeworld burned. Cities lay in ruins, the sky choked with ash and smoke from endless battles. Timothy Robertson stood on the bridge of the human stealth ship Nighthawk, watching the devastation unfold on the display. Approaching drop point, the pilot announced. Cloaking systems engaged. Timothy nodded, his face grim. Let's go get our friend. The strike team moved swiftly through the prison complex, their cloaking tech rendering them invisible to Zarkos's forces. Plasma bolts sizzled past as guard patrols swept the corridors. Cell block C, a Suliban rebel whispered. Corvax in there. They rounded a corner and found themselves face to face with a squad of enemy soldiers. For a heartbeat, both sides froze. Then all hell broke loose. The air filled with weapons fire and shouts. Timothy rolled behind a barricade, returning fire with his particle rifle. A Suliban rebel fell, clutching a smoking wound in his chest. We're pinned down, someone yelled. Suddenly, an explosion rocked the far end of the corridor. Through the smoke strode a group of armed prisoners, led by a familiar four-eyed figure. Korvac, Timothy shouted. The Suliban commander grinned fiercely. Didn't think I'd wait around for rescue, did you? With Korvac's group joining the fray, they pushed through to the landing pad. Freedom was in sight when the building shook violently. Support beams groaned and buckled. Look out! Timothy shoved Korvac clear as the ceiling caved in. Pain exploded through his body as tons of debris pinned him to the floor. Through blurred vision, he saw Korvac's face, etched with concern. Go! Timothy gasped. I'll slow you down. Complete the mission. I'll come back for you, Korvac vowed as the world faded to black. Timothy drifted in and out of consciousness. Bits and pieces filtered through. The hum of medical equipment, hushed voices discussing his condition. He caught snatches of news reports detailing the spreading rebellion. When he finally clawed his way back to full awareness, Timothy found himself in a makeshift hospital. A Suliban doctor explained the situation. Weeks had passed. The civil war raged on, and Zarkos was growing desperate. On a nearby screen, Zarkos himself appeared, ranting about doomsday weapons that would crush all opposition. Timothy's blood ran cold as he realized the madman's plan. With trembling hands, he reached for a comm unit. There was no time to fully recover. He had work to do. Korvac's face appeared, haggard but relieved. Timothy, thank the stars you're awake. We're about to launch our assault on Zarkos's weapons facility. I wish we had more time, but... I know, Timothy cut him off. Listen carefully. 
I have a plan. The battle raged in space above the facility. Rebel ships fought valiantly, but they were hopelessly outgunned. From his sickbed, Timothy furiously typed commands into a jury-rigged console, searching for a weakness. There, hidden in layers of Suliban code, he found what he was looking for. His fingers flew as he input the final override sequence. A proximity alarm blared. Timothy looked up to see Zarkos's smug face on the console, gloating over his impending victory. With the last of his strength, Timothy hit, Enter. Zarkos' expression turned from triumph to terror as his own weapons turned against him. The tyrant's screams were cut off as the signal died in a burst of static. Timothy slumped back, utterly spent. He'd done it. The Suliban were free. In the days that followed, as he recuperated, Timothy learned the full extent of what had happened. Korvac, now Emperor, visited often to discuss plans for rebuilding. It would be a long, difficult road ahead. But for the first time in ages, there was hope. Timothy Robertson stood on the bridge of the Suliban flagship, his weathered face etched with lines of worry. The years since the Civil War had not been kind, but they'd been productive. Beside him, Emperor Korvac's four eyes scanned the tactical display, tracking the movements of their combined fleet. The colony's defenses are failing, Korvac said, his voice tight. Kane's forces are breaking through sector by sector. Timothy nodded grimly. We knew this day might come. Let's hope our preparations were enough. Alarms blared as enemy ships poured into the system. The comm crackled with panicked reports from the surface. Timothy's hands flew across the control panel, coordinating their counterattack. All ships, form up on our flanks, he ordered. We'll hit them from multiple vectors. Try to divide their attention. The space around the colony world erupted in chaos. Plasma beams lanced between vessels, while fighters darted through the melee. Timothy watched as a Suliban cruiser exploded, torn apart by Kane's advanced weaponry. We're losing too many, Korvac growled. We need to change tactics. Timothy's mind raced. The gas giant's magnetic field. If we can lure them in close... Korvac nodded, understanding immediately. It might disrupt their targeting systems. Risky, but it could work. They executed the plan, drawing Kane's fleet into the turbulent region. As hoped, the enemy's precision faltered. Timothy seized the opportunity, coordinating a brutal assault that shattered Kane's formation. Victory seemed within reach when a massive ship decloaked at the system's edge. Timothy's blood ran cold as he recognized the distinctive profile of a Suliban doomsday weapon, one thought destroyed in the Civil War. Kane's face appeared on the main view screen, sneering. Did you really think you could stop me so easily? Surrender now, or I'll reduce this entire system to atoms. Timothy's fists clenched as he saw the fear in Korvac's eyes. They both knew Kane wasn't bluffing. With a heavy heart, Timothy made his decision. Korvac, he said quietly, I need your best stealth tech and a team of your most elite warriors. We're going to end this, here and now. Hours later, Timothy led a mixed group of humans and Sulabans through the cramped corridors of Kane's command ship. Their chameleonic armor blended seamlessly with the bulkheads, rendering them all but invisible. Team Alpha, head for the reactor core, Timothy whispered into his comm. Beta, free the prisoners. Korvac and I will take on Kane directly. They moved swiftly, years of joint training evident in their coordinated movements. Alarms blared as Team Alpha sabotaged key systems, creating a distraction. Timothy and Korvac burst into the command center, weapons drawn. Kane whirled, eyes widening in shock. How did you he began before diving for cover. The room erupted in chaos. Kane's guards opened fire, forcing Timothy and Korvac apart. Timothy rolled behind a console, plasma bolts sizzling past his head. He caught glimpses of Korvac's fluid movements as the Suliban Emperor engaged multiple opponents at once. Kane himself proved a formidable adversary, his cybernetic enhancements giving him inhuman speed and strength. Timothy found himself on the defensive, barely avoiding lethal blows. You're fighting for a lost cause, Kane taunted. 
Humanity will never accept alien rule. Timothy gritted his teeth. This isn't about rule. It's about cooperation, you bigoted bastard. He fainted left, then ducked under Kane's guard. A swift kick sent the Admiral stumbling back. Before Kane could recover, Korvac was there, his extra limbs a whirlwind of strikes. Together, Human and Suliban pressed their advantage. Kane, for all his enhancements, couldn't match their teamwork. A final, devastating combination sent him crashing to the deck, unconscious. As they secured their prisoner, Timothy's calm chirped. Sir, we found something. Files detailing a conspiracy reaching all the way to Earth. You need to see this. Timothy's heart sank as he reviewed the data. The scope of the betrayal was staggering. He looked at Korvac, seeing his own unwavering grit mirrored in those alien eyes. We can't let this stand, Korvac said quietly. Timothy nodded, the weight of their next steps heavy on his shoulders. No, we can't. It's time to take the fight to Earth itself. Timothy's fingers flew across the control panel as the joint human Suliban fleet dropped out of hyperspace above Earth. The blue-green orb of humanity's homeworld filled the viewscreen, a sight that once brought comfort but now filled him with dread. All ships, deploy fighters and dropships, he ordered. Korvac, your boarding team's ready? The Suliban Emperor nodded, his four eyes narrowed with focus. We strike fast and hard. Good hunting, my friend. As Timothy's assault shuttle plunged through the atmosphere, the sky lit up with weapons fire. Earth's defense grid had come alive, filling space with a deadly web of energy beams and missiles. Evasive maneuvers, Timothy shouted as a plasma bolt seared past, barely missing their wing. The shuttle bucked and rolled, alarms blaring as they dove towards the surface. They touched down hard in a war-torn cityscape. Smoke billowed from shattered buildings as Loyalist forces poured fire into the streets. Timothy led his team of Suliban commandos out of the shuttle, plasma rifles at the ready. Move! We need to reach that communications hub. They sprinted from cover to cover, dodging enemy fire. A Loyalist mech stomped around the corner, its heavy cannons tracking their position. Timothy's mind raced. He spotted a traffic control terminal and made a sprint for it. Bullets pinged off the pavement as Timothy slid behind the terminal. His fingers danced across the interface, bypassing firewalls and injecting viral code. The mech's guns swiveled wildly, firing at empty air as its systems went haywire. Now! Timothy shouted. The Suliban warriors unleashed a barrage of plasma fire, melting through the mech's compromised armor. It toppled with a thunderous crash. They fought their way block by block, Timothy's hacking skills, clearing obstacles, and sowing chaos among the enemy forces. Security cameras went dark, blast doors sealed shut, and automated defenses turned on their former masters. Finally, they reached the orbital tram station. The sleek building bristled with gun emplacements and energy shields. Timothy's team took cover as a hail of fire rained down. Cover me! Timothy shouted. He sprinted forward, a data spike in hand. Plasma bolts sizzled past as he reached the main control panel. With a grunt of effort, he jammed the spike home. The station's defenses flickered and died. Timothy's team surged forward, overwhelming the shock defenders. They fought their way to the broadcast hub at the heart of the facility. As Suliban Techs set up the encrypted transmission, Timothy's calm crackled to life. Korvac's voice came through, strained but triumphant. We've breached the command bunkers. The human leadership is in custody. Timothy allowed himself a grim smile as he began uploading the damning evidence. Good work. Now let's show humanity the truth. Across the planet, view screens flickered to life with irrefutable proof of the government's treachery. The streets erupted in chaos as citizens turned on their leaders. Timothy watched from the broadcast hub as the regime's control crumbled. In the days that followed, an interim government took shape. Timothy stood beside Korvac as they addressed a gathered crowd, outlining plans for free elections and a renewed human Suliban alliance. But even as hope blossomed, Timothy knew their work was nowhere near the end. Somewhere out there, Admiral Kane and his hardliner followers were regrouping. The hunt was just beginning. 
Timothy Robertson's breath rasped in his ears as he sprinted through the sterile corridors of Kane's stronghold. The acrid smell of plasma discharge hung in the air, mixing with the metallic tang of spilled blood. He skidded around a corner, plasma rifle at the ready, only to find himself face to face with a squad of Kane's loyalists. Time slowed. Timothy's finger tightened on the trigger as he dove for cover. Plasma bolts sizzled past, scorching the walls. He returned fire, his shots finding their marks with practiced precision. Bodies hit the floor as the air filled with screams and the hiss of superheated air. Korvac, come in, Timothy shouted into his comm as he reloaded. Static was his only reply. A lucky shot grazed his arm, searing flesh. Timothy hissed in pain but kept moving. He had to reach the bioweapons lab before it was too late. The security door loomed ahead, its control panel a daunting array of alien tech. Timothy's fingers flew across the interface, bypassing firewalls and injecting viral code. The door slid open with a hiss of escaping air. He stepped inside, weapon raised. The lab was a nightmare of gleaming equipment and pulsing vats of virulent material. Timothy's eyes widened as he took in the scale of Kane's operation. My God, he whispered. A proximity alarm blared. Timothy whirled, realizing too late he'd triggered a security protocol. The door slammed shut behind him, trapping him inside. No! He pounded on the unyielding metal, desperation clawing at his gut. He was sealed in with enough bioweapons to wipe out half the galaxy. Meanwhile, Korvac led his Sulaban warriors through a gauntlet of laser grids and automated turrets. They moved with fluid grace, their chameleonic skin shifting to blend with their surroundings. Kane's inner sanctum lay just ahead. The final blast door exploded inward under the combined firepower of Korvac's team. They surged into the room, weapons ready. Admiral Kane stood calmly at the center, a sardonic smile twisting his lips. Welcome, your majesty, he sneered. I've been expecting you. Korvac's four eyes narrowed. It's over, Kane. Surrender now. Kane chuckled, the sound devoid of warmth. Oh, I think not. He tapped a control on his wrist, bringing up a holographic display of the base's defenses. You see, I've rigged this entire facility with a rather nasty surprise. Unless I input a special code every 30 minutes, the bioweapon will be released, and I'm the only one who knows it. Korvac felt his heart sink. He couldn't risk calling Kane's bluff, not with so many lives at stake. But keeping the Admiral alive meant prolonging this conflict indefinitely. What's it going to be, Emperor? Kane's eyes glittered with malice. Destroy the weapon and doom your people. Or keep me alive and give my followers time to regroup. Korvac's mind raced, weighing impossible choices. The fate of two civilizations hung in the balance, and time was running out. Korvac's four eyes narrowed as he assessed the situation. With a swift motion, he lunged at Kane, catching the renegade admiral off guard. Kane's cybernetic enhancements whirred as he attempted to counter, but Korvac's extra limbs gave him the advantage. In seconds, Kane was pinned to the ground, struggling futilely against the Sulaban Emperor's iron grip. Secure him, Korvac ordered his warriors. They moved quickly, binding Kane with energy restraints. Kane sneered. You can't win the fail-safe. We'll remain deactivated as long as you're alive, Korvac cut him off, and you will stay that way for now. Korvac tapped his comm unit, sending an encrypted signal to Timothy. In the bioweapons lab, Timothy's wrist device blinked with the incoming message. His eyes widened as he read Korvac's orders. Understood. Timothy muttered, his fingers flying across the nearest terminal. He initiated the self-destruct sequence, watching as a countdown appeared on the screen. Sixty minutes to purge the entire stockpile. A klaxon blared, and Timothy cursed. Kane's security systems had kicked in, locking down the lab. He sprinted to another terminal, only to find it required a separate encryption key. Of course it couldn't be simple, Timothy growled, pulling out his hacking tools. He connected to the first terminal, beginning a brute force attack on its firewall. Simultaneously, he dashed to a second station, repeating the process. Sweat beaded on Timothy's forehead as he raced between terminals. 
The lab's automated defenses activated, forcing him to duck and weave between bursts of disabling energy. A bolt grazed his leg, sending pins and needles through the limb. Timothy gritted his teeth, pushing through the discomfort. He had four of the six required keys when a violent tremor shook the facility. Alarms screamed as an engine breach was detected. The countdown accelerated dramatically. Timothy's heart pounded as he redoubled his efforts, fingers a blur across the interfaces. With seconds to spare, he input the final key. Venting procedures initiated. Timothy bolted for the exit, only to find it sealed. His eyes darted around the room, landing on a single escape pod. He dove inside just as the lab erupted into flames. The pod ejected, tumbling through space. Timothy watched through the viewport as the bioweapons lab disintegrated, expelling its lethal cargo into the swirling gases of the Draxcal Nebula. The pathogen dissipated harmlessly, lost to the void. Meanwhile, Korvac dragged a bound cane through a hidden passage. They emerged in a small hangar where a sleek shuttle waited. Korvac shoved Kane inside, taking the controls. The shuttle blasted free of the doomed facility, weaving through debris and weapons fire. Behind them, Kane's stronghold vanished in a series of spectacular explosions. Hours later, Timothy's pod was recovered by an Alliance vessel. As he stumbled out, he found Korvac waiting, a subdued Kane in tow. We did it. Timothy said, exhaustion evident in his voice. Korvac nodded. For now, but our work is nowhere near the end. They gathered with their top advisors in the ship's war room. Holographic displays showed the known locations of Kane's remaining forces scattered across the galaxy. We've struck a major blow, Korvac began, but Kane's followers will try to regroup. We must be vigilant. Timothy leaned forward, studying the map. We'll need to coordinate our intelligence networks, root out every cell of this conspiracy. A human general spoke up. And what of Earth? The power vacuum there needs to be addressed. Korvac and Timothy exchanged glances. The road ahead would not be easy. We'll establish a joint task force, Timothy proposed. Human and Suliban operatives working together to stabilize the situation and pave the way for new leadership. Korvac nodded in agreement. But that's just the beginning. We need to forge a true partnership between our peoples, one built on mutual trust and respect. The room fell silent as the weight of the challenge ahead settled on them all. The victory they'd achieved was significant, but it was clear that the real work was just beginning. The Alliance transport shuddered as plasma bolts slammed into its hull. Timothy Robertson gripped his seat eyes scanning tactical readouts as Kane's loyalists swarmed their convoy. Evasive maneuvers, he barked. The pilot banked hard, narrowly avoiding a barrage of missiles. A deafening explosion rocked the ship. Alarms blared as the hull breached. Timothy unstrapped himself, grabbing a plasma rifle. Korvac, we need to... His words died as a boarding pod punctured the hull. Kane's troops poured in, filling the air with weapons fire. Timothy dove behind a bulkhead, returning fire. The acrid smell of ozone and burning metal filled his nostrils. Through the chaos, Timothy spotted Kane. The Admiral grinned, tapping commands into a wrist device. Emergency hatches slammed shut, cutting Timothy off from his prisoner. No! Timothy sprinted forward, but it was too late. Kane's escape pod detached, rocketing away from the crippled transport. Hours later, Timothy stood on the bridge of an Alliance cruiser, studying sensor data. There, he pointed to a faint energy signature. Kane's hiding in that derelict Suliban station. Korvac's four eyes narrowed. A fitting place for a rat to hide. They formulated their plan as the cruiser approached. Timothy led his strike team to the airlock, checking seals on their zero-G combat suits. Remember, he addressed his human and Suliban warriors. Disable those defense turrets fast. We can't let Kane escape again. The airlock cycled open. Timothy ignited his jetpack, leading the charge across open space. Debris from the station's crumbling superstructure spun past as they closed in. Kane's troops opened fire from entrenched positions. Timothy weaved through the barrage, plasma bolts sizzling past his helmet. 
he signaled to his team, splitting off to flank the nearest weapons emplacement. Timothy's boots magnetized to the hull as he landed. He sprinted across the station's pitted surface, leaping over gaping fissures. A loyalist trooper popped up from cover. Timothy dropped, sliding under a hail of gunfire. He came up firing, his shots finding their mark. Ahead, the station's main gun battery loomed. Timothy primed a demolition charge, ducking as return fire pinged off nearby debris. He hurled the charge, diving clear as it detonated in a spectacular fireball. Weapons neutralized, Timothy reported, panting. Moving to intercept Kane. He jetted towards a nearby airlock, his team following close behind. They breached the station's interior, gravity plating kicking in as they touched down. Timothy raced through twisting corridors, passing ruptured lab equipment and stripped computer banks. He burst into a cavernous chamber filled with prototype machinery. Kane stood at a central console, fingers flying across holographic controls. A pulsing orb of energy coalesced above a strange device. It's over, Kane! Timothy leveled his rifle. The Admiral sneered. On the contrary, it's only just begun. Kane slammed his palm onto the console. The energy orb imploded, warping space itself. Timothy lunged forward, but it was too late. Kane vanished in a flash of twisted light. The station bucked violently. Alarms screamed as gravitic sensors went haywire. Timothy staggered, barely keeping his footing as the deck heaved beneath him. All units evacuate, he shouted into his comm. The planetoid's going critical. Timothy sprinted back the way he came, dodging falling debris. He reached the airlock just as Korvac's voice crackled over the comm. Timothy, we're aborting the assault. Get clear now. He launched into space, jetpack flaring. Behind him, the station crumbled as the planetoid's gravitational field tore itself apart. Timothy's team regrouped aboard the Alliance cruiser, watching grimly as the sensor reading stabilized. Kane had escaped, leaving devastation in his wake. But this was far from finished. The hunt for the rogue admiral, and the terrifying weapon he now possessed, had only just begun. The shipyard's command deck erupted in chaos as Timothy Robertson and Admiral Kane collided. Sparks flew from shattered consoles, the air thick with ozone and the hum of the rift drive powering up. Timothy's armor crackled with energy, smoke curling from overloaded circuits as he struggled to his feet. Kane lashed out, cybernetic limbs whirring. Timothy ducked, feeling the whoosh of air as Kane's fists sailed over his head. He countered with a vicious uppercut, his knuckles connecting with Kane's jaw with a sickening crunch. The Admiral staggered back, spitting blood. You can't stop this, Robertson. Timothy pressed his advantage, driving Kane back with a flurry of blows. His Suliban training guided each strike, finding weak points in Kane's augmented frame. A kick to the knee, an elbow to the solar plexus. Kane's defenses crumbled under the relentless assault. With a final devastating punch, Timothy sent Kane crashing to the deck. The Admiral lay broken, his breathing ragged, but a cruel smile twisted his lips. You've lost, Kane wheezed. The rift drive, it's primed. My death activates it. Timothy's blood ran cold. He glanced at the drive's control panel, watching in horror as a countdown initiated. Kane's laughter, wet with blood, filled the air. Oblivion comes for us all, Robertson. The Alliance will be ashes. Timothy's mind raced. There was no time to disarm the device, no way to stop the chain reaction. He made his choice in an instant. Scooping up Kane's limp form, Timothy activated his armor's emergency thrusters. The outer airlock loomed ahead. With a grunt of effort, he launched them both towards the opening. Space yawned before them, the maw of the forming singularity a terrifying void. Timothy aimed their trajectory, pouring every last ounce of power into his thrusters. As they hurtled towards oblivion, Timothy caught a final glimpse of his ship arriving. A flash of regret for all he was leaving behind. Then, darkness. An implosion of light and sound as the singularity consumed them. On the bridge of the Suliban flagship, Emperor Korvac watched in stunned silence. The sensors flared, then stabilized. 
Somehow the blast had been contained. Korvac's four eyes blinked rapidly, processing the loss. Timothy, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. A junior officer approached, hesitant. Your Majesty, your orders? Korvac straightened, pushing aside his grief. Signal the fleet. We withdraw. He paused, gazing at the empty space where the singularity had been. And let it be known, Timothy Robertson's sacrifice will never be forgotten. Years passed. The alliance between humans and Sulabans flourished. On a hundred worlds, monuments rose to honor the fallen. Timothy's face, cast in bronze and stone, looked out over grateful crowds. But at the edge of known space, where the singularity had once raged, strange phenomena began to manifest. Sensor boys reported bizarre gravitational fluctuations. Fleeting energy signatures defied explanation. Deep within the twisted remnants of space-time, something stirred. A consciousness, battered but unbroken. Glimpses of cosmic horrors beyond imagining. And a warning carried across the gulf of decades. On an unremarkable day, alarms blared across monitoring stations. A rupture in the fabric of reality itself. And from it emerged a figure, scarred, aged, but unmistakable. Timothy Robertson had returned. His eyes held the weight of eons. His voice cracked with urgency as he spoke of terrors lurking in the dark between stars. The Alliance faced a threat beyond anything they had ever known. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.